Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now, before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and well, subscribing to the channel would be helpful. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. So this is the fourth video in a series of videos I'm doing about Switzerland cheese and wine. Three weeks ago, I covered the Gruyere cheese, the ones you see here. Two weeks ago, I did a detailed show about Swiss wine. It went to the level of what I would do for a Psalm School Advance episode that has yet to ever really be released. So it definitely went above and beyond a consumer level episode. Last week, I did the first Swiss wine, and this week is the second wine and the final episode of the series. Now, this is the Cave Calos Humani Rouge La Mougere. And I've also had this wine for a while, like last week. I'll pair the wine with the Gruyere, but this wine does not come from the same region as the Le Gruyere AOP. And I'll get to that in a minute. The reason why I'm laughing is I think I spent like five times trying to pronounce this, the name of the um, wine correctly. And I probably still messed it up. Anyway, let's get some background on the winery. Now, compared to last week's wine, this one is still in its infancy. It was started in 1960 by Ferdinand Calos in the village of Miege, which is in the Valais Canton. This village was its own municipality or commune until 2021, when it was merged with three others to form the Noble Contre uh, municipality. I probably pronounced that wrong. Anyway, it's also in the Sierre district, which takes its name from the municipality of the same name directly to the south. They are now in their third generation of running the winery with the eldest of four daughters, Sandrine Calos, joining her parents, Conrad and Anne Carol Calos, in 2013 after getting her degree in enology and viticulture. They first attained organic certification in the 1990s for part of their vineyards and completed the process in 2017. In 2019, they were named Organic Swiss Winemaker of the Year. Now, that's a pretty significant accomplishment only two years after being fully certified organic. They have seven hectares in small plots throughout the area overlooking the Bois de Finge forest across the Rhone River. They don't give the exact locations of their vineyards, but I've narrowed it down to several possibilities based upon a video on the French version of their site and photos throughout the site and their Instagram posts. I have two large areas I'm calling, quote, somewhere in here. With those two areas, I know for sure that at least three, I don't know, maybe four plots are either the exact parcel or at least I got part of it. I have others there and elsewhere that I don't know how much of the area, but I'm highly confident I highlighted at least a section they own. If you're from the winery and watching this, let me know how wrong or right I was or both. I literally spent a good two and a half hours on this part. Now, the soils in the area are calcasol, which means heavily limestone, and then Payrosol, which are 60% stones. They say it gives them a, quote, light and shallow soil that warms up quickly and transfers minerals, freshness, and a typicality to the different grape varieties that are subservient to it. As far as this wine, it has the words La Musier on it. And from what I see in this area, that corresponds to basically the road the vineyard's on. As far as what exact plot, I can't be 100% certain, but at least it's a small road, so I'm, I'm going to own close. So I bought this wine from Somsluck in 2019, and I at least have some info that is sorely missing on the website from Somsluck. So Conrad is the winemaker for this wine, along with his daughter, Sandrine. It was early on for Sandrine since she joined them prior to, joined him in the prior year. They hand harvest the grapes, and I'm guessing from their website and Instagram account, this is what they do in all of their vineyards. Very little of this wine is made at 100 cases. That equates to about four standard Bordeaux barrels. Of that 100, 25% make it to the States. Aging was in large 600 liter neutral barrels called demi moods. The grape variety is Humani Rouge. Even though I bought the wine four years ago, I didn't remember that this was actually the grape variety. It's also known as Coraline, and it comes from the Val d'Ossa region across the border from Valais in northeastern Italy. As far as Switzerland, a total of 142 hectares are planted with 99% of the plantings in Valais and the remaining 1% in Vaud. So it's a pretty rare grape. I'm going to guess that most of the industry people I know have never had a wine from this grape, let alone have heard of it. So let's get the stats for the wine. 
the 2014 Cave Colos Humani Rouge La Mougier. I paid $54 on Somme Select. It's 100% Humani Rouge. It's from the Valet AOP, the Le Coteau de Sierre. Now, this is not an official AOP as far as you know, but it indicates this is on the slopes of the district of Sierre. The soil is limestone. It's hand harvested, organically farmed, though it wasn't certified, at least not this vintage. It's aged over 12 months in 600 liter neutral demi moods. There's an additional aging of one year in the bottle. The ABV is 13.2%. The production is 100 bottles, sorry, 100 cases, which comes out to 1,200 bottles. And the drinking window is until 2024. All right, so let's get into the wine and see how this wine goes with, well, the cheese from its neighboring cheese AOP. So drinking window till uh, 2024, till next year. So I should be hitting it in its prime. Very nice. I'm excited to try this wine because, well, it's a great variety I've never had before. Like I said, I guarantee if I just said to random, to random people in the industry, especially people who like know some stuff, I'd be like, do you know Humani Rouge? And they're like, what? So Humangi Rouge? They'd be like, no. I'm like, well, I know it. And I've had wine from it. All right. Remember way back in the day, I used to be really careful how I pulled it out. Well, apparently you just pull it out. Anyway. All right. Let's give this a shot here. Um, I mean, on, on the color, you know, visually, I'd be like, yeah, it looks like a Pinot Noir. You know, it's translucent. Um, it's kind of funny. It doesn't have as much orange. Not that, not that this one had a lot of orange, but it's got, it doesn't have, doesn't show as much like aging on it. And it's actually what, three years older. So, you know, yeah, as far as tears, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're going down pretty quickly. So, you know, definitely a moderate wine, uh, moderate plus kind of starts around 13.5 at 13.2. In my experience, 13.2 probably is the exact ABV. Um, we are in the, quote, moderate level, old school winemaking. Wow, on the nose, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Syrah. It's, it's pretty aromatic. Um, it's not youthful by any means, but it's not like, I don't feel like it's like, I would guess it was a 10 plus year wine. Well, because it's not getting there. This is kind of spice driven. I'm going to assume because the barrels are neutral, that this is a grape variety thing. It's very much a Christmas spice thing. It kind of reminds me of this grouping of grapes like Franconia or Blafrancish, um, Gamay, Menthea, those types of um, uh, Marcelon, my new favorite grape, which I've only really had the one wine, but it was delicious. There's also a um, um, almost a bit of tar, not quite rubber. There's red fruit going on here. It's kind of a raspberry cherry thing, um, slightly tart. There's also a bit of rubber to it. In some ways, I'd almost, I'd almost, in my, it's not quite burnt tire, but it's definitely a rubber smell. So if I was a little confused, I might be like, is somebody sneaking a pinotage to me? And it's like, yeah, there's like a smoke to it, a smokiness to it. Like, you know, the, the, you put the fire out a little while ago and it's just kind of lingering around. A little cinnamon to it. It's really nice. All right, let's give it give it a little whirl here. Hey, Marcelon, hold my wine. Anyway, um, no, I love Marcelon. Well, the least the one I had. This one is really cool. Like, yeah, it's like walking into a spice shop. It's like walking into an antique store. It's it's like smelling and tasting in your mouth. You know, like you're just you're smelling all the spices. Um, you're you're smelling all that wood. You're smelling all that almost lacquer. Um, you're smelling that. You're also smelling kind of like the the uh, the potpourri, but even just that, like the wicker, like the wood. Um, yeah, it is fantastic. Like in a blind, I'd be. I'd be like, well, first of all, if it was a blind, I would just immediately go to Gamay. But if I was just being given the wine, like just in general, like, hey, try it out. 
I would think it's like I would think it's like uh, Bluff Frankish, honestly. Uh, Saint Laurent, uh, you know, something else. I mean, I wouldn't know it since I've never had it before. I wouldn't know what else to call it. Yeah, it's spice driven. It's totally right my alley. Um, it's got a little bit of earth to it. Um, not, and it, it, wow, it's got a little bit of heat, honestly. Even though it's 13.2, there's almost like a cinnamon like warmth to it. Yeah, almost like a cinnamon stick, like pure cinnamon, not, not like, not like, um, you know, a, a candy cane type of thing or red hot, like actually just cinnamon spice. And then there's like this kind of something else. Honestly, it was almost like a syrup. Like I, I felt like I got a little maple syrup on it too. I know what it is. It's more like pine. It's more like pine cones, not pine saw, but pine cones. And that type of forest type of aroma. It wasn't necessarily maple syrup, but yeah, alpine. Well, duh. I mean, it's an alpine wine. So yeah, it yeah, it's like having the little air freshener, the alpine air freshener in your car. This is exactly what that smells and tastes like. All right, it is badass wine. So let's let's get into let's get into the cheese here. Uh, remember, this cheese is coming from uh, the neighbor to the north. So let's try it. Sans Rhine. God, I feel like this cheese is getting better and better every time I try it. All right, so the regular AOP, the quote classic, feels like it's got a little more complexity to it. Maybe it's because it's warming up even more. Um, but it's still still on the youthful side, so like really delicious. Like you can just like crush this. Like you're like, oh, give me more cheese. Like it's kind of like it's on it's on like the cheese platter at a party, and you're just like, yeah, give me more, give me more. But you're just like, um, you're not necessarily thinking about it. Okay, um, it's, you know, it's a daily driver cheese, which is what it is yeah i mean it goes i think the pinot noir goes better with it but what it does with the wine it gives you a little more um milkiness or creamy creaminess and a little more fruit forwardness to it it kind of tames the the really over the top uh spice and and earth component or non-fruit component um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, I didn't really talk about the fruit on this. I mean, I talked all secondaries and non-fruit components, but I mean, it's, it's like a raspberry, like dried raspberry, almost, almost actually, you know, it's like dried cranberry, like almost like a craisin too. Yeah. All right. Let's try it with the rind. I feel like the rind's gotten more pungent in a good way. The rind's where it's at with this wine. It really plays well with the spice component. The earthiness, yeah. I cannot wait to try this with the reserve. But yeah, I mean, this this cheese is going really well with this. And I figured it would. I didn't realize how light of a wine this was, how Pinot Noir-like it was. So, I mean, it was just, I don't know, just luck. I was expecting it to be a heavier wine. I don't know why, but I was. Okay, let's try it with the reserve. No rind. I love the crunchiness of that cheese. Mmm. And the complexity of it, you know, you've you've got you've got the creaminess to it, you've got that little crunch to it, but you've got that earth component going on, and you've got that kind of kind of um, how did I put it? Not not rotten, but baked, kind of baked, oxidized fruit, more that 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 stone fruit. So you're you're your peach more, but apricots in there too now. Yeah. 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 As they say in German speaking Switzerland, that was, that was killer right there. Yeah. So it's not, it, it, they kind of enhance each other. They kind of, I feel like I can, I can distinguish both of them, each of them. Um, and they're kind of like just in lockstep with each other, just kind of like they they're like arm in arm, and they're like we're just going down, we're going down the road. You 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 can you can see that there's differences, but they're in harmony, type of thing. All right, it's killer. I think the Pinot Noir is still a better pairing. In some ways, I actually think this is a better pairing with, with the classic. Um, the rind, I think, is overpowering the wine, like. 
I mean, it was it was in the background for a little bit, but then, but then the, it kind of was just like came to the forefront. Let's do a little more wine here. Yeah, on this cheese, on this cheese pairing, I love the rind on on the reserve. You watch the episodes, you know I, I've been craving. I mean, like praising the rind. I think it's great, but I think in this pairing, the rind is not the way to go with the reserve. At least on this particular cheese, the re no rind. I think it's great, but I think I think the regular cheese. Whether it's rind or not, I think it's where it's at. I'm going to give this a little shot, another shot here with the regular, no rind. Yeah. And I'm going to do a little piece. I'm going to try to just eat the rind, really. Rind's good, though. Yeah, I think, I think it's just, it doesn't work on the rind, but otherwise, the cheese is fantastic. So, Pinot Noir, this Pinot Noir is great. Three of the four pairings with this wine, fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Why well, is a little bit of orange now? Showing a little bit of age. Anyway, that's gonna do it for the today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing, uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and then tell your friends. And we'll see you next time. Maybe with some more cheese. Probably not. Probably it's just more wine. Bam. <laughs>